So today, um, the sixth uh, uh, Lagos uh, uh, Badminton Classics uh, came to an end at uh, the weekend. And number one seed, uh, Jonathan Matthias, uh, defeated um, his opponent in the final to emerge uh, champion. Uh, the game was played inside the Moladel Koyak Thomas Hall of the Teslim Balogo Stadium on Sunday. The Brazilian defeated uh, Pablo Abian of Spain 21-17. 21-19 in attention-soaked men's singles final to cut home the sixth edition of the Classics. With me in the studio now is the president of the Nigeria Badminton Federation, uh, Francis Obi. I was almost uh, going to call him a chief. I don't know if you've been coordinated yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Matthias, a Brazilian, is the champion of the sixth edition of the Badminton Classics. Talk us through the process of organizing at uh, this event? Well, this particular edition was quite challenging, mm -hmm. I must tell you, because, um, you know, we've been out for three years. Mm -hmm. We've not had any, starting from the COVID. Due to COVID. Yeah, and then the aftermath, you know, trying to get life back to normal. So last year, we were, we were to hold the sixth edition, but we had to cancel because of the elections and a lot of things, you know, trying to get things back. So this time around, even with all the experience of five editions, I mean, it was like it was having, tough. yeah, it was tough, because <laughs> it was like having the first edition, you know, having been out away for about three years. And um, uh, also this year, we had about 30 countries, and I mean, being an Olympic qualifier, that was what attracted more countries. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was a record, because uh, the highest number of countries we've had in any edition in the past was in 2017, when we had 26 mm -hmm. countries. So this time Now we had 30. Yeah. So uh, more countries, I mean, more players from all over the world, and uh, something happened for the first time in the history. An African got to the quarterfinals in mm -hmm. the men's singles. I mean, we've not even attempted it in the women's singles before. And that was a Nigerian by the person of Anu Opeori. Nigeria's number one player. Yes, an African number one player. So for us, um, it meant progress. Does, okay. Fantastic. We are, we are making progress. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, I, I was going to ask you, um, more countries participating this time, uh, does that suggest there was um, um, a surge in the prize money? No, not necessarily. The same category of championship. But it's just that, like I said, because it's an Olympic qualifier, more people will want to come to Ghana their points mm -hmm. to improve their world ranking and definitely to qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympics. Mm -hmm. That was a major attraction, not necessarily the prize money. Okay. How many Nigerians participated in this competition? Uh, we had about 42 players. 42 Nigerians? Yes. And only one got to the quarterfinals. What does this say about the state of badminton in Nigeria and Africa? Well, badminton in Africa, yeah, there's still a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. I must tell you. Uh, for us, for the Nigerian players, I, I will say something. You know, uh, since the COVID, Apart from the sports festival, we've not really had any major championship. You know, we had the elections, then the issues, court case, and it mm -hmm. took a while. By the time it was resolved, it has taken a while. for. So this was the first major event that the Federation was putting together. So I'll tell you that a lot of our players, national players, were rusty. They are not taking, I mean, if you don't play competition, no matter even if you are you training, lose form. until you go for a competition, that's when you know what your form is like. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we were not, but because Anu had, um, of course, it was at the Olympics, and it's on the road to Paris 2024 mm -hmm. right now. So he's the African number one, and he's the African champion. So that tells you that, of course, he, he, he will definitely be on top of his game. So he was able to maintain that, mm -hmm. that standard. So outside that, most of the other players have not. We have quite good players, I must tell you, mm -hmm. very good players, but the exposure. I know he's having more of it mm -hmm. because he's on, he's on the road to uh, Paris. So he, he, he was in Denmark for the World Championship. He came okay. in from Denmark into oh, the Lagos. Lagos and then he's likely going again by next week or the upper week to Vietnam. He's going there, then from there to, um, I think, to Malaysia for a camp. And then play one or a few competitions. Come back, he'll be playing Egypt. So he's going around to, to try and put himself in a, in a position to qualify for the Olympics. For the Olympics yes. So that level of, of exposure. 
It's you high. Can't, you can't, uh, I mean, so mm -hmm. the other players, it's not like, they, we don't, we have many Anus, I must, I must tell you, mm -hmm. very good players. Or who don't have the kind of exposure, exposure that, that Anu has. Is, is All right, in the build-up to this competition, I, 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 I knew there were lots of um, um, rough edges, and uh, how were you able to really uh, put things in place to ensure this competition um, was held? You know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not uh, very spiritual. I won't say I'm not too <laughs> spiritual, but I must tell you that at the end of the day, I tell people that it was by the grace of God. Because um, after last year's experience, it took a lot of courage to approach the world body again and say we wanted to host this. And when we did, the world body was like, are you sure Nigeria can do this? We said yes. And they put it on the calendar. A few months, to the event, they called us. Are you sure you can do it? We said yes. <laughs> then they called the African body. Are you sure Nigeria can do it? And I must give it to the uh, president of the Badminton Confederation Africa. The BCA. He stood by us and he said, you know what? Nigeria will do it. So, with that kind of support and encouragement, you know, not failure was not an option. An option. But somehow, I must tell you, I also had a very good team who, with all the anxiety of how are we going to do this, I just told them, just believe and have faith. And we it kept moving. Happen. I'm telling you, I, there, there were things that happened that I, didn't, I wasn't sure of. But when they happened, from the quarters they happened, I mean, places you did not expect mm -hmm. or you were not even looking at, towards, mm -hmm. So it will just so, tell you the hand of God was in it. I, I must just confess. Absolutely. So with this done and dusted, what are plans for the next edition? Well, you know, it took this because for this us to happened be able to... after the long break due to COVID. Yeah. And now, no more COVID. Is it certain there will be a Lagos badminton classic in 2024? Definitely. Definitely. It has to continue. And I, I will tell you that this has boosted our confidence. You know, I have not done it for three years. You know, it was a bit shaky. Mm -hmm. But now, with the level of success we were able to achieve, I can tell you that uh, we'll start planning for next year's own from this year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what will be the plan of the, B, uh, the, the, the BFN to ensure that more Nigerian players are able to get to the latter stages of the Lagos Classics, like Anu just did at the weekend? The plan will be to organize more national championships. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll be more busy. And then also, where the opportunity arises, to expose them a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the All-African Senior, uh, Senior Champ Championship is coming up next year in mm -hmm. Egypt, early around February. So we'll pray and hope that the team will be able to go. You know, this year's edition was in South Africa. Sure. We went and uh, we didn't go with a complete team. Some of the players were refused visa. Mm -hmm. So we could not really perform, but Anu was still able to retain his title. So th this coming All-Africa Senior, it's a, it's, a, it's a competition we, want, we are going to really prepare for. Mm -hmm. And it will be, that preparation will be a stepping stone towards a, a better outing at the next Lagos International. Well, I had a meeting with uh, the new sport minister uh, just um, a couple of days ago, myself and a couple of um, my senior colleagues, and he says he will be meeting with uh, our federation presidents very soon to discuss the way forward uh, for Nigerian sports. At, at, at this time, what is, is, is the situation with the BFN? Yeah, well, we are waiting for, I, I also listened to him when he made that statement, and we are actually looking forward to that. Um, I always tell people, the, the sporting federations are his primary constituencies. I mean, mm -hmm. those are the people that he, he should use to get to his athletes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for me, for the minister to see the importance of having a meeting with the federation president, I mean, that, uh, kudos to him. Okay. Uh, and that meeting should be a no holds bar. Mm -hmm. People should be able to express, open, themselves. express themselves. And that's the only way you get to know what the issues are, what the real problems are. Because if you don't know what the problems are, how do you, you prepare solutions? <laughs> so uh, I, I think it's a step in the right direction. And okay. I really encourage that uh, you should have such a meeting and let it, and we'll be able to take it off from there. Okay. Congratulations to the president of the Nigeria Badminton Federation for successfully hosting the sixth edition of the Lagos uh, Classic. It is the biggest badminton event on the continent on the of continent. Africa. Thank you for coming on the show today.